in the beginning There was nothing. The end. Yes, that would be all of it. From absolutely nothing comes absolutely nothing. If there really had ever been absolutely nothing, then there would always be absolutely nothing. Nothing physical lasts forever. Even subatomic particles, such as the proton, have a half-life. As something now exists, including at least you, something has always existed. Must that thing be physical? The idea that only physical things exist is a non-physical thing that exists. So it is a false idea. If you make the idea into a sentence, to speak, write or remember it, that sentence may be physical. Yet depends upon the non-physical idea, which does not depend upon it. It is necessary that a thing has always existed, and as non-physical things exist, this thing is not physical. More than one thing now exists, so it is necessary that the thing is able to make other things, including physical things. Now, lest you be tempted to relapse into physicalism, bear in mind that believing physicalism as true requires factors which would not exist if it were true. These include real laws of logic, truth has objective value, being truthful has objective moral value. If physicalism truly describes reality, then all three of these things are illusions or myths borrowed from a non-physicalist world view. The laws of logic are immaterial, unchanging, universal. They are also a real part of this universe, and they are not physical. How could immaterial, unchanging, universal laws regarding logical thought exist in a universe that's purely and only physical? If we lived in a physicalist universe, there'd be no such thing as binding or true objective values. We'd only have subjective preferences. Truth and error would be the same in such a universe, also reality and myth. To make any persuasive case or argument for physicalism shows that person holding objective moral values as real. Ergo, considering the universe to be physicalist is incoherent. Making that claim requires stepping outside the boundary of physicalism. With that repeatedly established, let's consider the necessary, non-made existent. If you were the non-made thing and decided to communicate with the things you had made, how would you do it? Now raise it one level of difficulty. How would you do it so that the message identified the one communicating to be the non-made thing? Here's one suggestion. Accurately describe world-changing events well before they could be reasonably predicted from the circumstances known when they were described. Has this been done? Yes.
several times. One such event was Alexander the Great, as he said about invading the known lands, reading local documentation then more than one century old, symbolically describing his own forces. A few centuries later, more writing, building upon that, described the overthrowing of a world leader about two millennia after Alexander. Some of the landmark events used as timing marks in the later writing did not take place for several centuries after that writing was inscribed. The leader was imprisoned in the very year predicted, and executed in a nearby nation during the following year. This, of course, is unbelievable if only the physical exists. In the beginning, something existed which has no beginning. It also has no ending. <laughs>